Hello everyone, um, it's Mark again. Um, I'm going to do another video. Um, today's video is going to be about my landscape um, kit. So I'm not talking about lenses or cameras, I'm just going to talk about the equipment I take out when I do um, a landscape shoot. So first of all, any um, beginning, anybody's taking up landscape photography, the first thing you're going to need is a really good tripod. There's plenty out there to choose from. Um, I've had plenty of tripods from cheap ones right through to the one I've got now. Um, I've had Manfrotto and various others. The one I've got now is um, the three-legged thing Albert. Um, really compact tripod as you can see. It's carbon, uh, carbon fibre so it is light. It's not the lightest tripod I've had but it's a sturdy piece of equipment. Um, I do like three-legged th things. They're a British company um, and they're really well made and the customer service is excellent. So this is the three-legged thing Albert. As you can see it's compact and it's one of these new ones that folds out on itself. So you end up like that. Really good tripod. Filter wise, um, a long time ago I did a lot of research into filters because it's a bit of a minefield and there's plenty out there to choose from. Um, I did buy some cheap ones which weren't very good to be honest so I decided to invest in um, the Lee filter system. So I use the 100mm fi um, filter system from Lee. Um, I have built this system up over a number of years. I didn't go out and buy everything at once. I have built it up um, probably over four years now. Uh, the basis of the filter system is the older, which looks something like that. Okay, so that's the older. Um, how the Lee system works is you buy an adapter for your lens, which is the filter size. That screws onto the front of the lens and then this just clips onto that adapter um, and it can turn. And then your filters go into these little slots here. This one is set up to take two filters and also um, a polarizer on the front. So that's the holder. Filter wise, like I say, these are built up over a number of years. I have the 105mm landscape polarizer, which looks something like that. Yeah. This goes onto the front of the, the hold, like I mentioned earlier, it just screws on and then this turns. Anybody who's thinking about buying filters, whatever make, I would recommend looking at getting a polarizer um, for your first one. I have a six stop neutral density filter and what that means is this filter when it goes into the holder will should take out six stops worth of light. So these are the sort of filters you would use if you were wanting to um, put movement into water, for example waves, um, or if you wanted, sorry, slow the movement of the water, smooth it out, if you wanted to see, um, record the movement in clouds, these are the sort of filters um, you would use. I have three different kinds of neutral density, so I have the six stop, I have the ten stop, and I also have the 15 stop as well. Um, I've never really used this yet. Um, I am planning on doing a shoot soon in uh, harsh light where I want to see what I can get with this. So they're the neutral density filters. The other filters that I have um, from Lee, um, I keep them in, I think they call it a Lee field pack. Um, it is just something that you can take out and it holds, I think it holds up to 10 filters. Um, as you can see, I filled it. So in here, um, I have a set of soft graduated filters. So what this means is, as you can see, 
you can pick it up. The this one is a 0.6, which I think is equivalent to two stops. So it's graduated, so it's darker at the top, and as you're going down, it gets lighter and lighter till very bottom, it's clear. Um, soft means the graduation is really, really soft as you're working your way down. I have three of these, so I have, I think it's a point three, a point six, and a point nine, and all that means is just different stops of light that is cutting out. I also have the hard version of them as well, so there's three of them. Uh, the main difference is the hard one just has a more defined line going across, as you can see by this one. This is the 0.6 hard, and you can see the line there. It's not graduated as much going down. This one, for example, like I mentioned in the previous video, if you have got a, um, the horizon has got a straight line, this is where you would drop this into the filter holder how you need it. The idea of these sort of filters is, for example, if you are taking um, a sunrise or um, a sunset shot and you need to bring down the, um, the top half of your photo where the sun is, for example, or the sun's coming up or going down, you would drop one of these in, which means then you can expose for the bottom half of your photo properly. If you exposed for the bottom half of your photo, you would find it wasn't exposed at the top. If you exposed to get the sky correctly exposed, then you would find um, the bottom half would be dark. Yeah, so these are the idea of using filters. I prefer using filters than trying to do it um, in post-processing. It's just a lot easier. So what I've just shown you is the soft grad and the hard grad. Recently, um, I bought what they call a landscape filter kit from Lee. Um, I haven't used it yet, but this one, for example, is called the straw. And I think the idea of this is um, you could turn this the other way and it would um, make the foreground, for example, if you had grass or trees, it would make it greener. There's also another one in there that you can use for sunsets or sunrises. So there, that's mostly my leaf filter kit. I do not take this out with me on every shoe because I don't need to. Like I mentioned in my other video, I plan my shoots now and figure out what filters I need. What I do um, once I've done that is I transfer the filters I need into this little filter pouch, which is a low pro filter pouch 100. I can fit the filters I need, including the holder, including the polarizer, and any other little bits I need into here. So it's all in one compartment. It can clip onto a belt if you need to. I think this one's made to fit on um, a low pro bag with a certain fitting. But yeah, you can put it onto your belt or you can just put it, pop it straight into your bag. But this carries everything I need filter wise. Other little bits I take out when I'm doing a landscape shoot is spirit level, cheap from Amazon, couple of quid, and that goes on my cam on the on the hot shoe of my camera. Um, as you can see, there's three spirit levels on here, so you can make sure, um, as well as your tripod being level, you can make sure your camera's level as well. Tripods normally have a spirit level built in somewhere. Um, usually on the ball head and sometimes on the actual legs itself on the top but I use this just to double check um, it, it's a lot easier the other thing I use um, and take out on landscape especially when you're doing long exposures using the ND grads you know the 10 stop and the 15 stop and maybe this uh, and the 6 stop as well is I take this it usually comes when you buy a camera and not many people know what it is um, what it is, is it's to cover your eyepiece up. So I've just taken this off from here and then this fits on over there 
and what it does, it covers its, it covers the IP tool. Um, a lot of the pro bodies, for example, I know Nikon have got a little lever or something here, and you press it and it does it automatically. It's something built in. Um, if you're doing long exposures and you didn't do this, you would find light was coming in through the viewfinder, and it, you'd have silly effects coming upon your photos. So I always use that. I'll just show you how the spirit level looks. So the hot shoe, and then it just fits in like that. So you can level it up. Yeah. Other bits I take out with me when I'm doing a landscape shoe is a corded remote release. This just fits into the side of the camera and it allows me to um, just time how long my shutter's going to be open for. You can, this is quite a fancy one, but you, I think you can set it to do all sorts really, um, time lapse and things like that, which I don't do. I just normally, if I go past the, if I go into the bulb mode on a long exposure, so my camera's going to keep the uh, shutter open until I tell it not to, um, then I usually use this to do it um, and it, this has a countdown and it actually beeps as well so you can tell you know, if you need to keep it open for two and a half minutes this will show you a display and it'll also do a beep as well. Um, really useful piece, piece of kit to have and I would recommend them. They're not that expensive. You can buy ones that aren't as fancy um, and it is just a, a button like you have here and that's it. The other things that I take is, this is called a Hoodman Loop. The reason I bought this is, and a lot of landscape photographers have this same problem, is when you're trying to see, review your images at the back of camera, um, and the sun is blaring and you, you like this, trying to find, or some people put a coat over their heads, this just cuts it out. What it does is, this goes on to, you just put it against your screen at the back and then you look through there and you cuts out all the light so you can see everything. Um, I use this usually on two occasions on shoots. Um, I always use manual focusing when I'm doing a landscape shoot. So I usually go zoom into where I want to focus the point on. I then put this up there and then I use my manual focus um, and I can see it. Then, again, like I said earlier, I use it to review images. Really peaceful, kit, uh, useful piece of kit to have. You can permanently attach it there. You can get some straps that go over your camera and things like that. But I just have it on a lanyard and just put it around my neck. Uh, and then just have a look when I need to. Other things I take out with me. Um, these aren't necessary, but I do it anyway. Is I usually have um, a microfiber towel in my bag just in case. Some people, uh, some people use the old-fashioned chamois levers um, and it's just to either put over your camera if it's raining or um, just to wipe things down when you need to. I'll just show you um, the adapters. Um, I have for the leaf filters, um, I have an adapter that fits every lens that I've got um, and like I say, all they do is screw into the filter on the top of your, uh, at the end of the lens, and then the holder goes in, and I just have them marked here. The last piece of equipment that I take out, because uh, I am knocking on a bit, is a lightweight stool. Um, I think this is a Van Gogh, I picked it up for next to nothing, um, and I just usually attach this to my bag somewhere, it weighs next to nothing, and um, it's very very useful it, you know if you have a shot set up or you're waiting for a while for the uh, the light to be right I just pop this out sit on it and it's beautiful really really comfy I have missed one thing uh, recently invested in this which is the wide angled lens hood for Lee um, I've used it briefly um, I thought it was okay, I did find one issue with it, but I think that's just user error um, and I don't think it's anything to do with this. This, um, the reason I bought this is if I do, I like to do a lot of sunrise or sunset shots and sometimes 
you're pointing directly into the sun and the idea of this is this goes it's the same idea at the back you, your lens adapter would go here and this would sit in front of your lens so your lens will come out that way the idea is it it's on like a concertina so you can fold it out so if the sun was coming this way then you could block it by moving that out like that an example if it was coming straight down then you could go like that this is the this is the wide angled ones in other words this is to use if you're using a wide angle lens they do another one which is a standard one i did buy that one but i found when i put a wide angle lens on you could see the outside of this so um, i sold it on and bought the wide angle one um, and it has it's worked well yeah so you can just block out the sun wherever you need to really good piece of kit i bought a separate um a ring for the front so i could put the polarizer on as well so this one is set up as the other one was two slots for filters here and then the ring at the front so i could put the 105 landscape polarizer on I have invested a lot in leaf filters. Um, I don't think I've used any of them for their full potential yet, but they are worth the money. Uh, there's other makes out there as well. I've heard good things about, um, I think it's Nissi, Nissi filters. So there's lots to choose from, but it is a bit of a minefield. So that's really my landscape kit. Um, there's not much more to say really. Oh, these, yeah. Again, Lee, I invested in these. And what these are, I'll show you. When you put these adapter onto your lens, um, you not you cannot get the um, lens cap back on. Yeah, so this is on the front of your lens. What these do is act as a temporary lens cap while these are attached to your lens, and all they do is just fit in like that. Yeah. Um, what I do on a landscape shoot normally when preparing is I will put my adapters on the lenses that I'm taking with me um, and then I will put these on as well. So when I take them out of the bag, I'm not messing about, I'm going to put the adapters on. They're already on there and these are just protecting your lens. Uh, really cheap from Lee. Uh, I, think, I think you can get them for about five or six quid for a set of three. I hope you enjoyed... Um, this really brief rundown of my landscape stuff. Like I say, I'm, I'm not a professional. Um, a lot of the equipment I've got, I haven't used to its full potential. Um, if you are interested in the Lee filters, if you go on YouTube, Lee, um, have a channel on there and there's plenty of educational um, videos on there of people using um, the Lee filters. Um, I've, I've watched them over and over um, and picked up a lot of great tips from them. People like Joe Cornish made a, a series of them a number of years ago and other people as well um, from all over the world have used them. So, you know, if you're interested in filters, not just Lee ones, but they give you an idea of what filter does what and why. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, I have had plenty of more views now, uh, so I have gone over the 50 mark I think, um, I'm hoping to get a few more, um, if you do want to see some more videos from me please subscribe and please leave any comments if I've missed anything out or made any massive errors, thanks a lot.